Greetings, this is Wednesday, July 14th, and if you can get any altitude at all, please let us know which way the wind is blowing. We'll take a look at windy, but first let's look at the latest infrared on the MODIS and the VIIRS system. This is on the Fire Information for Resource Management System. The links are below. We're looking at the flat lake fire as it moves in an eastwardly direction towards Highway 97 and the Lone Butte 100 Mile House area. Both infrared systems are showing an approach that's almost to the western edge of the lake at 83 Mile. The VIIRS system is showing a distance about 6 kilometers to the highway, and then the MODIS system has a bit more flow up to the north towards Davis Lake and that's showing about five kilometers from the highway. When we turn on both systems you can see the encroachment. Uh, it's been moving primarily in an eastward direction. There is uh, some modus showing up a little bit further north uh, towards Davis Lake. So if you're on the eastern flank of that, on the northern flank, and now with uh, some wind changes even if you're on the southern flank of that just be very aware we're also going to jump a few kilometers south we're looking at chasm this is the latest modus update uh, it's right up against the northern side of chasm loon lake road uh, when we shift over to the VIIRS, we see a more concentrated cluster of infrared that's moving in a forested block and the trend has been to move northeast however if we look at windy we can see there's this northern flow coming down and pushing smoke into a area of calm right around uh, the flat lake area the chasm area and that's sitting in the middle getting a lot more smoke but which wind system will be stronger? Will the southern winds move up and push it north or will that northern swath come down and push it south? Very difficult to tell. Here we're looking at the smoke. Uh, it's primarily moving to the east and the northeast but it's swirling around. Uh, the air is still in some areas and it can be quite gusty if you're on ridges or in gullies. It can change depending on which side of the valley that you're on. The image that we're looking at right now on the right hand side we can see this cluster. It's on the southeast side of Young Lake. Then over on the left we see the Flat Lake Fire. It's moving in an eastward direction and then below that we see the cluster that's to the north of the chasm. Zooming out, we can see Green Lake in the center of the screen and the approach of the Flat Lake fire on the left-hand side moving in that eastward direction. So looking at the map, there are fire breaks. There's water bodies. There are the highway itself. However, there's a lot of infrastructure, a lot of settlement, development. Uh, people have their homes in this area. It's quite populated. So we want to be very aware of which way that wind is going to come from. Is it coming from the north, from the west, or is there going to be a push from the south? It really doesn't matter if you're anywhere on the eastern side of these fire zones. You want to have your plan in order and what are your access routes, what's the vegetation and terrain between you and those fire lines. So check in the links below to BC Wildfire. Find out what the evacuation alerts and orders are. I know there's a lot of evacuation alerts popping up around 100 Mile Green Lake. Uh, whether they get shift to an order may come quickly depending on the wind conditions and whether or not these fires start to blow embers and uh, ash and such. We're looking at the chasm again and the same holds true here. If the wind starts coming predominantly from the southwest pushing to the northeast uh, it could move into that large forested block. However, if we do get more gusts coming in from the north you want to consider where is that fire going to move into on an approach. Uh, I'm not seeing wind from the northeast, 
but there is a potential for a wind to come from the north. And I'll show those weather models. Here we're looking at a weather system. The flag is around the flat lake area. It's blowing from the northwest six kilometers an hour. Then if we jump down to the chasm, it slowed a bit from the north four kilometers an hour. Now if we shift to another weather model which shows a tighter pattern, um, it's making a more specific prediction. Uh, it's showing from the northwest at Flat Lake about four kilometers an hour and then down south at Chasm it slowed right down to two kilometers an hour from the northwest. So that's why it's probably very smoky in these areas is this wafting slight breeze pushing all that smoke material down into uh, the chasm itself. Right now we're looking on the ECM model and the critical time period is going to be about 2 p.m. all the way to 8 p.m. That's when most of the gusts will occur. They could go as high as 30 kilometers an hour and they'll mainly be from the south and from the west. So if you're north and east of these positions, you want to be aware. It looks to ease down to 7 kilometers an hour over the evening, but primarily coming from the west. The GFS model is showing more variation, but the strongest gusts will come at 8 p.m., about 18 to 20 kilometers an hour. It's showing those gusts coming from the south and the west. So again, it, it does correlate with the previous ECM model. The wind should settle down overnight, down to 7 kilometers an hour, but then tomorrow uh, they could come from the northeast a bit. There's a lot more variation in that model. Now we're looking at a third forecast. This is the ICON system, and we see more gusts coming from the north. There's probably a bit of a lull going on right now. Uh, then we see some cloud activity coming in and stronger winds coming in from the north. They could gust as high as uh, 30 kilometers an hour, then easing overnight and coming more from the northwest. This is a trough in the center between two sets of wind. One's coming from the north, one's coming from the south, and this region is caught in the middle. The wind direction is very tentative and that's probably influencing a lot of these evacuation alerts because of the unpredictability. As I'm doing this uh, video narrative, I'm getting pinged with uh, email alerts from the NASA firm system. I'm subscribed to an area around the Chasm Park and it's showing me a few hotspots popping up periodically. Uh, if you do subscribe, uh, that can be unnerving. Um, there is also files available for download. It does let you know when activity is happening. However, it only updates as a satellite passes. So often it's just easier to go to the firm's website and refresh, get an update and see what's going on. Also check with the BC Wildfire Service. I'm looking at their map here. We're looking at Chasm as that lone dot in the center of the screen. But in the directions to the east, to the west, up to the north, to the Flat Lake area, there are evacuation alerts and orders. So it's crucial to know what your access routes are going to be. So please do plan ahead and be aware that between 3 and 8 p.m. wind could pick up and there could be gusts. They may be coming from the north. They may also be coming from the west. So there could also be variation coming from the south. So it really depends depends on your location, where the fire line is, and what's between you and that fire line. Check the alerts often if you have access to that. Uh, keep in touch with friends and relatives. Uh, let them know where you're at. We are looking at some increased activity. There may be people rushing about. Please be safe on all the roadways and uh, make sure nobody gets left behind. Thank you for watching. Keep your nose to the breeze.